Just three words can be enough to tip the balance in favour of a prosecution against you, and it can be any number of combinations of different three words, and I'm going to give you some examples. And this might apply even if you are not the original perpetrator, and yet the blame is being laid at your door for a particular offence. You see, you might have heard of the term confession, but you might think of a confession meaning a full-blown admission to everything that you're accused of. And of course, that's the simplest example of a confession, just simply saying, yes, it was me, I did it, in order to get the biggest reduction in sentence. But it doesn't stop there. A confession is very broadly defined in the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984 as being any statement which is wholly or partly adverse to the person who made it. And further, there is no requirement that this statement is made to anyone in authority, such as a police officer. And it can be made by words or otherwise. Meaning even laughing at the suggestion that someone's been hurt by an attack is adverse to your position because it can be taken to mean that you agree with it, you think it was right, justified, funny or, or whatever. It can even be in the form of a smile and a nod when someone's telling you that a defence has taken place. But let's come back to my examples of three words because this can often get someone into trouble. Let's take the scenario where you are attacked and you respond in self-defence, only your attacker comes off very much worse than you do. Let's say you respond by restraining the attacker with their arm, uh, which ends up broken, and then they fall, bang their head, get a serious injury, and maybe even die afterwards. It might then be you that is charged with assault, ABH, GBH, or even worse. All the while, when you have a very valid defence, which might be when you are using reasonable and proportionate force in circumstances that you genuinely believe it's necessary. However, as I said, just three words, might take all that away. Let's say all of this happens in very short succession and you find yourself being interviewed and you use the words, he deserved it. That might be how you feel because he was an attacker. But these three words are adverse to your interests. They are a confession of sorts and they might harm a defense of self-defense. Alternatively, you might say, I do it again. These are also adverse to your position because it suggests that you had a motive, you had an intention of doing this act, and it might be used against your argument of self-defense. Alternatively, you might say, it's his fault. Another three words, which again is partly adverse to your position. Whilst it's not necessarily going to entirely destroy your argument of self-defense, you can be sure that words like that are going to be put back to you as being adverse to your position in an attempt to knock out your defense of self-defense. This is why I always say, even if you have a very valid defense, you absolutely must take formal legal advice and representation about what you say about your actions, the steps that you took, and why. Taking this scenario of an attack, you are permitted to defend yourself and you don't have to wait to be attacked before you defend yourself. That's known as a preemptive strike. But it must be a situation that you genuinely believe to exist at the time, that is a subjective element, what you think, and then that the force that you used is reasonable. And that's an objective test. What do other people think? What does an honest, ordinary, reasonable person think as to the amount of force that you used to defend yourself in that situation, assuming that they've believed your subjective argument as to what that circumstance was at that particular time? If these things are true, you are likely to make out a defense of self-defense. But using any variation of those three words or anything like it, may go against you. So as I always say, make sure you always take advice. Thank you for watching.